National Infertility Awareness Week, a time to remember those who really struggled to start a family. And this week's Better Health and Wellness, KSN's Carly Wills is live in studio. And Carly, this really hits home for many people watching at home. Good morning. Yeah, that's because an estimated one in eight women struggle with infertility and numbers for men are difficult to come across. I spoke to three Kansas families about the extra challenges, uncomfortable conversations, and often isolating feelings that come with infertility. A doctor first mentioned infertility as a possibility for Cheryl Childers when she got an ovarian cyst removed at age 15. She didn't think much of it then. Eight years, a wedding, and another surgery later. Again, it was, you might have a little bit of a hard time, but you should be fine. Years went by as Cheryl and her husband fielded awkward questions from family and friends. What's taking you guys so long? It's not that hard. At 36, she saw a fertility doctor who told her they could try IVF, but he had his doubts. The isolation and heaviness that come with infertility were never far. A couple of years ago, um, I was here at a restaurant here in Wichita. They were doing the whole thing of handing out the flowers to moms on Mother's Day. And they asked, oh, are you a mom? And I said, no. And they said, okay. And then they took the flower away. After two failed adoptions and one miscarriage, Cheryl is working to find peace in this chapter of her story coming to a close. And so at this point, we have just determined that this isn't our path. And we and we're coming to terms with that. Jason and Shelby Taves married young and had difficulties getting pregnant. Shelby miscarried twins before going through fertility treatments. The couple says a urologist dismissed the issue with Jason, telling him surgery was the only option. If this urologist hadn't um, totally just like, almost like neglected to treat us the way that he had normally treated, we would never have gone with the embryo adoption. In searching through their insurance options, Shelby discovered embryo adoption, where a couple donates their genetic material to other people struggling to conceive. In June 2018, Shelby and Jason were matched with a couple who fit their request. The genetic couple's embryo was transferred to Shelby in October 2018. In June 2019, Shelby gave birth to Shiloh. How do we raise Shiloh to know uh, how much we love her and our story with her, but also um, you know, the difference between her biological parents and her genetic parents? Shelby and Jason have a relationship with Shiloh's genetic parents and plan to introduce Shiloh to them, but COVID got in the way. The Taveses plan to give birth to more of Shiloh's genetic siblings through the embryos they received, but recently Shelby was shocked to discover she was pregnant, despite not having done an embryo transfer yet. How do we still share what God's done in our life? without making it feel like we're insensitive to having gone through the trenches before, having been in the muck, in the pain, in the hardship. Amy Carell began blogging about her journey with infertility as an outlet, and the subject was too taboo to discuss. Very much feeling like I, I wasn't made right. I wasn't, you're, you're made a woman and you have kids. She and her husband went through years of treatment, hormones and procedures. Amy's third IVF treatment used two frozen eggs from 10 years prior, but she found out on Mother's Day that year the embryos did not take. About six months later, doctors discovered a pseudo tumor in her brain. I think the deepest part of knowing God had it the whole time, I would have died if I would have went into labor, and that's tough. You wanted something this whole time, and it was to have a baby, and yet I was devastated with that last one. But no, and the whole time I wouldn't have been here today if I would have ever got pregnant. At that point, foster care tugged at Amy's heart. One day, a two-year-old walked into their home, and Amy and her husband ended up adopting him. He was so much younger than what we thought we were going to have. Um, and oh my goodness, I couldn't imagine life without him. Watch this. Now with her son, Amy and her husband continue to foster. There's no right or wrong way to forming your family. The resources are up on this story on KSN.com and more from each of these family stories. Very thankful for them for sharing their journeys with us. Carly Willis, KSN News 3.